Hi, I'm Michael Thomas with Key Code Media. And I'm Carl Soule from Adobe. Thanks for tuning into the webinar today. Feel free to ask questions below and we'll get to them as soon as we can. Now today's webinar is on collaborative workflows, namely Adobe Shared Projects and Quantum Storage. Now as you can see, Carl and I are in the same facility, but we're not really near one another. That's correct. Yeah, we're uh, uh, working within the same facility and we're actually working on a uh, same project. We're using some footage from a short film called See You Around from Oren Bremer. Uh, you can check it out on YouTube. And right now, I'm actually in the process of cutting part of Act 2, um, but I need Michael to actually start the work on uh, some sound, make some changes to music on Act 1. Now, the old school way of getting projects and media from one station to another meant copying to a hard drive. And that's wholly inefficient and cuts down on the time you could be spending actually working on that project. So when we start talking about shared projects, it's a function of not just the software. That's correct. Uh, today we're going to be working with Adobe Premiere Pro CC. This is the 2018 release. And uh, there's some really cool new features in this version of the software that address uh, collaboration and allow people to work together. Um, but while Adobe has really focused on the uh, creative software tools, you really need a strong hardware foundation uh, with shared storage that's going to drive your overall workflow. So today we'll cover how Adobe handles shared projects and multiple users at the same time on top of Quantum Excellus Foundation shared storage, which serves up the media to both stations. So what do we need to get started with, Carl? Well, we need to make sure everybody is working on uh, Creative Cloud, uh, the 2018 release of Adobe Premiere. This will be Adobe Premiere Pro version 12 or higher. Um, it's very important to be using this version because uh, version 12 introduced two new features in the software. The first one is being able to open up multiple projects at the same time. Uh, we're going to be showing that here in just a second. And as well as that, we've added a really elegant project locking system that prevents anybody from overwriting each other's work. So these two features really mean that you have to be on uh, Premiere Pro version 12 or higher. Uh, again, that is the Creative Cloud 2018 release uh, that actually came out in late 2017. Each of us are connected to a Quantum Excellus Foundation shared storage system, which is new and specifically designed for smaller work groups. Now, if the name Quantum sounds familiar, it's because the Storenext file system has been used for many years in the media and entertainment space. Not only does it work on things such as facility shared storage, but also works across cloud storage and archive, tape storage, and the really cool object storage. But lucky for you, all of this is done in the background, so you have a single namespace to look at, which, like shared products from Adobe, allows us to create without having to worry about the technology. So here at Keycode, we have the Excellus Foundation set up, and both Carl and I are connected via 1 gig E connections, and we're working with low bitrate media. But we certainly could work with 10 gig E connections and iSCSI connections if we wanted to do an offline online workflow or work with high bandwidth media. Well, the next thing we need to set up on each copy of Premiere Pro, we need to make sure that project locking is enabled. So this is an optional feature, but it's important that everybody within the editing facility has this enabled on their system. I'm going to go to uh, my preferences on my local system here and choose the collaboration preference panel. This is a new preference panel in version 12 of Premiere Pro CC. And you'll see here on the screen, I've got uh, my project locking is indeed enabled. Uh, if you look at this panel, you will notice there's some settings up here at the top that are geared towards something called team projects. That's actually not something that we are uh, touching on or discussing today. That is kind of a cloud-based solution for doing some collaboration. Um, what we're showing today using the Excellus Foundation is all local. It doesn't require any cloud connection or any connectivity uh, to the internet in order to operate. Um, but uh, so just ignore the settings up at the top of the panel. We really want to focus on the checkbox down below, uh, make sure that project locking is enabled. And next, we also want to make sure that there is a username added. Now, this is an independent field. It's not tied to an Adobe ID or a login name or anything else. Um, with this username, uh, we just need to have an identifier as to who has any given project locked at any given time. Uh, so for your facility, it may make more sense to put in Edit Bay 1, Edit Bay 2, Edit Bay 3. In my case, this is my laptop. I'm the only one editing on it, so I have my name uh, placed in the, uh, in the screen here. 
once this is set up, I can begin to work inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, I can begin to open up different projects. The easiest way to kind of organize a single project that multiple people are going to be using is to create something we're calling a master project. Now, there's no real difference in the file structure of a master project versus a regular Premiere Pro project. They're still just Premiere Pro project files. But the idea of this organization is inside of a master project, what you see here, I've got a series of what look like bins inside of this master project. In reality, these are actually separate project files on disk. Each of these is a self-contained independent Premiere Pro project. Um, and I'm simply using a reference or a shortcut here to gain access to those different Premiere Pro project files. So what this means is I can break up a larger project into smaller shared projects. And each of those shared projects allow different people to be working on different parts of the project simultaneously. So right now, as an example, I've got Act 2 currently opened up. And I'm currently editing uh, part of the sequence here in Act 2. Um, I've gone in and uh, started to, you know, just start doing a little bit of rough cutting back together with the, uh, the uh, kind of back and forth, the two shots between these two people here. Um, but at the same time, I can have Act 1 open. And in this case, I've got Act 1 open in a read-only mode because I'm just kind of going through and doing some reviews of this. Um, I can't make any changes to this right now because it is indeed in read-only mode. I can tell that by the lock icon down in the lower left corner of the project panel. Uh, it lets me know that this is currently locked out. Um, so again, great for review. Doesn't give me the ability to make any changes. Um, if I want to change this into read-only mode or read-write mode, if I want to take ownership of this, I can simply click the lock icon and now I have taken on, over ownership of Act 1, and I can start to move things around and start to make some changes. When I'm done with those changes, if I want to relinquish control of this, I click the lock icon again, and you see that now this has gone back into read-only mode. So what this means is that uh, different people can have different parts of a project open at the same time, and it's also possible to organize your media in ways uh, so that uh, the common media elements, things like sound effects, things like music libraries, those can all exist in a separate independent project file. And in this case, uh, for example, with sound effects, I'm just going to hold down the command or control key on Windows and double click on this. It'll automatically open up in uh, read only mode because I'm not typically going in and making any changes to this. I've got some production elements here. I'm going to be cutting these into sequences that are actually in other projects. And one of the other benefits of this is uh, when you're working with very large Premiere Pro projects, when you've got projects that have you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of assets inside of them, typically the old way of working meant that Premiere would have to touch every single piece of media that lived inside of that project. And that meant for long load times, waiting for uh, the project to load before we could jump in and get going. This master project opens in seconds because the only thing contained inside of it are shortcuts to other project files. So I can pick and choose which projects that I'm actively working on. If I'm just working on a project with a sequence in it, for example, um, only the media within that sequence has to be touched in order to uh, open that particular part of the project. So you kind of pay as you go. Instead of a long load time at the beginning and everything is ready for you, um, you can kind of pick and choose what you want to have open for the task of that particular day. Uh, if I'm working on sound effects, I would need to open the sound effects project, uh, give that a few seconds for it to load. Uh, then if I'm working on dailies, I would open that up. Um, again, give that a few seconds to load. So it's more of a pay as you go model and it lets you selectively choose what media is accessible and ready for editorial work within Premiere. I've gone ahead and made this uh, bar sequence read only. Um, we've been auditioning, and I've been playing around with the music here, not really super happy with the, uh, the music choice in the scene. Everything else is cutting together really well, but we wanna kinda tinker with the music bed that's playing around in the background. And with that, we'll turn things over to Michael. Sure, Carl. 
Now, since Excel's foundation appears as a mounted volume to your computer, I can simply use Premiere's media browser to navigate to the volume and start bringing in the media or open the project that Carl's already working with. And if I wanted to start using After Effects or Prelude or any other Adobe app, Excel's foundation is completely available to those apps as well. So let me make those audio changes for Carl. But before I do, a question we get asked quite a bit revolves around dynamic linking. Uh, as you know, a dynamic linking is a way for various Adobe apps to use the same media and project uh, in multiple Adobe applications. Now, Carl, could you still do that with Adobe Shared Projects and on Shared Storage? That's an excellent question, Michael. So working with dynamic link inside of this shared environment uh, shouldn't really change that much at all. The biggest thing to be aware of is that applications such as Adobe Audition or Adobe After Effects that you might be dynamically linking into, uh, those applications don't have any type of project locking associated with their project files. So for example, when I uh, replace some clips in a timeline here um, with an After Effects composition, I'm generating an After Effects project file um, that is associated with that. So uh, there is a possibility that if you have multiple After Effects artists, you still have to kind of manage who is opening up which After Effects project that is dynamically linked into the Premiere Pro projects. Um, but there's no restrictions or limitations within these projects. Even though we've got multiple projects open, we've got projects that are open in this read-write mode or read-only mode, if I'm in a read-write situation, if I'm uh, actively, I own the lock on a project, and I decide to uh, send some things over to After Effects, I can go ahead and do that. There's no limits or restrictions on that front. Pretty important though, in a shared environment, I'd wanna make sure and save the uh, After Effects project file over on uh, the Excellus Foundation so that, again, everybody would have access to it. Uh, Premiere on any system would read it as a clip and it would continue to work as a, a, a dynamically linked object within that sequence. All right, so Michael has gone through and done some changes uh, to the audio on this. Now, once again, I'm inside of uh, this sequence. Um, I've actually got the sequence open still. I'm still working on this in uh, read-only mode. I can see the little lock up by the, uh, the name of it here. Uh, but Michael's gone through and made some changes to it. Uh, what I'm gonna see here is uh, those changes will give me a, uh, as soon as those changes are saved, an exclamation point appears next to the tab at the top of the project. And by clicking on the little flyout menu, I can choose to refresh the project. I don't have to close the bin and open the bin back up again in order to uh, see those changes take effect. I can simply choose to refresh it and uh, those changes will open up on the timeline. Now I can go through and I can preview the music here. It's like uh, uh, Michael did a nice replace edit on this, kept some of the keyframing. Uh, made some additional uh, tweaks and modifications to it, and uh, I can just keep going. If I wanted to start uh, editing this myself, I could pick up the phone and tell Michael, you know, hey, relinquish the lock on this. Um, you know, let me start editing this particular piece. And uh, at that point, I'd be able to click on the red lock here and take over ownership of this, and then I would own the lock, and I could continue to edit this further. Uh, so really, really simple workflow. Uh, allows uh, multiple people to work and you can see at a glance who is editing what at any point in the master project. That brings up a really good point, Carl. Uh, since we're all on shared storage and we're using shared projects, can we possibly just light up a third CPU and have that machine open up our shared projects and do the export so it doesn't tie up our editing machines? No, that shouldn't be an issue at all. In fact, with Creative Cloud, you can run Adobe Media Encoder uh, on a different machine and actually have Adobe Media Encoder uh, work and render the files out so that our editing machines are not tied up. Media Encoder can read a Premiere Pro project file directly. So I can open up, I can point at the Excellus, I can grab the Premiere Pro project file, choose which sequence within that project that I want to export, and then I can choose whichever preset I want to use to export to. Media Encoder has a wide range of different export formats, whether I'm going out to the web, whether I'm producing a DCP file for uh, a screening or if I'm in a broadcast facility and I have a specific broadcast format that I need to be able to export to. Media Encoder can handle all of that on a separate machine while Michael and I continue to edit. 
So that was pretty simple, Carl. Uh, and I guess to be even more simple, we can use the quantum ecosystem to back up to tier two storage or cloud storage or even automate to LTO tape, which means there isn't any user intervention to do that, which is kind of cool because this room is dark and, and pretty creepy and I think we want to get out of here. So uh, check us out online. Feel free to engage with us so we can talk about Adobe and quantum and uh, we'll see you next time. Let's go, Carl.